Clean it again. <laughs> and I'm like, whoa. And they just back out there cleaning it again. I'm talking a straight distraction. It could be sports going on that morning. My kid got a soccer game. I'm going to that soccer game. Instead of them giving God the praise, because he's waking them up for them to go do that, so they'd rather put that distraction before God, you know, and God just said, if you if you friendships of the world, so if you caught up in all these things that's going on in the world, you sure gonna be an enemy of me because you don't even know me. Because you caught up in the everything that goes on. Like when we were growing up, there wasn't no internet. Internet probably came around what the last ten years or whatever. Now you got internet, I don't care what you pull up, whether whether we may have started off that it was gonna be good. Now there's a lot of bad that pops up. You can be sitting here on your computer and a pop up, pop up some woman or some crap that's going on. Like, what in the world is going on? You could be in a prayer. I, I don't know if y'all have done this. I have been in a prayer, praying to God, and I'm being distracted. My son has been walked in the room, and I don't know, he don't know that I'm in there praying. And, Daddy, I'm sorry. I've been girl, something going back out. Or my mind could have been and went other ways. So, what I'm saying is that in our match that we're in, there are going to be distractions. But we have to realize that Christ's been through this match. That's what we talked about, it's him being our Spartan partner, him being our coach. And that's what we talked about with the Holy Spirit as well. He's helping guys. But the thing about it, God is there for us in the match, in the whole match. And even though that we're going to have these distractions, we still have to prepare ourselves to overcome these distractions. That's why I talked about strength and weaknesses. If you don't put anything in there, in God's word, in you, putting on the whole armor, you're going to get knocked out of that match. Or you're going to go in that match and be confused. Or you might have looked at that ring girl, what I was saying about earlier, and you're still thinking about her, or you're thinking about something else with that card, and you're going to get boppered. And you may not even get a chance to get through that match. Um, any questions or comments while I'm continuing? Any questions or comments, anybody? I was, I was thinking that um, the, uh, the distractions may be not bad of themselves. Uh, and I was thinking about myself, about the internet. Mm -hmm. I'll sit down at the computer to pay a bill or send somebody a message or something, and I'll think, I'll see what's on Facebook, and I'll look at Facebook, and the next thing I know, there's an hour has gone by, and I never did do what I sat down there to do, and I don't have anything to show for what I did. I've just been wasting time. And exactly. don't realize, I think I've been there 15 minutes, and I've been there an hour. And you know what, Sister Marilyn, that could happen even on our workplace. We're supposed to be doing a job. I work for the government, and uh, they give us authorization now. We can go on Facebook for doing our break time. I called one of my... Um, colleagues that was on it because I'm a senior tech and I'm like whoa he was on the YouTube and he haven't logged in because we have a chat that we're supposed to chat and you know if there's problems going on within the system I'm like this guy ain't been logged on here it is 10 30 we've been here at 10 o'clock and I hear somebody mm -hmm. he's back there just I hear this little giggling going on <laughs> I go back there I didn't go halfway I go through the glass and the glass reflected off what he was doing he was on the YouTube so I was going to you know had to report it to my manager because we can do it on the time that we're off the clock, but he had started like right before he got here. And I was like, whoa, what a distraction, because there was calls that was rolling through the queue. And, you know, and like you said, we can be on there to, to do good and do things the right way. And, you know, I think, what was that, uh, Paul said, or uh, something of, every time I try to do good, like evil was always near. And so we can have the right intentions, because I don't want distractions to be like, there's always, a negative in it, but it seems like there's always a negative output that comes in it, even though when we're doing good, even though when we're trying to do something positive, even if we're sitting there and want to read God's word, and next thing you know, we get a call. Something is going on or something. So, I mean, I mean, it starts off that we, and you know, we, we may have good intentions and in doing things right, the right way, but for some reason, that distraction or whatever it is, it causes us to fall back off. But the thing about it that I love about the good Lord is his grace and his mercy. We're able to, when we fall, we're able to, to get back up and have another chance at it. And especially us as being Christians, that we know about it, but the people that don't know, they don't even, you know, they're not even aware of the situation of who breathes. They're thinking it's some Big Bang Theory. It's just hypothetically, whereas I'm just here today, and, uh, um, you know, I just get up and go. They don't have a clue with the relationship with God. And, and, that itself, that's really like, 
I don't know, hopefully they'll get it by us, by them, by them seeing our light and what we're trying to do. And hopefully one day, you know, before it's, it's too late that, you know, that those people will get it as well. Any other clear questions or comments on? We're still on distraction. We've got a few minutes left here. Still on it. Let me see. And you're right, uh, media, what else? Magic. Magic is a, is a, is a distraction. Not people take a little cloth and tell you do that group and it's gone or whatever or what was that? David <coughs> Copperfield used to talk about he's gonna make this whole city disappear and all this old stuff and those are distractions. Sorcery, uh, we get caught into that. That's a distraction. Um, I was talking about shoplifters. Shoplifters, they distract. You know, if they're robbing a bank or if they're stealing some, they want to distract the audience or the bank tellers or. Or the, the the guys with the with the you know who's guarding the place they want to distract them so they can get away as well. Uh, also talked about religious distractions. Um, I talked about books and comments. Sometimes we can we can get books that may be false teaching. A lot of it could be whereas people just throwing the views out there. Even you know myself you know people could look at it and say well he just throwing his views out there. He ain't you know I'm not gonna read that. Or then you got people that put stuff out there that it's a story that they draw up way from I don't know where, I don't know where it came from. That's even like some of these movies that we see. We look at Thor and Captain America. We know ain't nobody, no Spider-Man jumping around, shooting out no webs, <laughs> hanging from no building. But we, but we get caught into that. And we get caught into these movies that comes out. That they're fun, they're, they're entertaining, but they can, be, they can become a distraction as well. I just want to, you know, encourage us. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not knocking any of that, but we still being distracted by it. Let me see, there were some other ones. I said the workplace, comedy. Comedy can be a distraction also. Somebody could be making fun of you, and you don't even realize that they're making fun of you. Or they could be making fun of a situation, and it could be causing a distraction. You could be going to a comedy club every time that you look around and somebody's saying a lot of vulgar things that are going on in that comedy, whether it's bad or good. It could be a distraction for you. It, it, what it's doing is taking the place of what you need to be doing, prioritizing. And that's what I'm using in this match for because the fact is um, these distractions while you're in this battle, they're going to come about. And as you're going to see over in some of these rounds how Satan's going to change up. He's going to think that you're going to think that you may have won that round and he's going to change up on, in that round. Whether you may think that you won, he's going to bring something else in there and it may be uh, another sin that may be coming your way. It may be something that's going to entice you. It may be something that's going to distract you from what you need to stay into. Um, I think we've been going through this thing with Christian last week in our classes. We've been on the subject of Lent. And I think one of the things that he had shared was uh, uh, for us to kind of like study every day. He said he's going to wreck us. And with that being said, that was like a, a, one of the ministers, something. I think his name was Rex. And he was using the word as uh, he's going to wreck us, which, which meant that every Wednesday, he wanted to find out, did we or not read God's word? And who read it for seven days, you know, from the Wednesday to the next Wednesday? And when he would ask that question, I'd be like, ah, I missed that day. Well, did I get all of the days? So what I'm saying that there were some distractions along the way that made me not study God's word. So I have to implement, implement in my life, as well as you all, you know, I can't tell you what to do. In order for us to become stronger, even in these bouts that we're going through, even in these rounds that we're going through, we have to put something off in there, and that's God's word. That's the sword that I was talking about, because we cannot fight in this boxing match with one glove on, just like with our full armor, and not have God's word, the sword, and think we're going to defeat or win that battle on that part of it. Are there any questions or comments? We're still on this. Yeah, you know, one, one thing I was I've been thinking about a little bit is, well, you know, the, the distractions exist all the time. How, you know, I think it's how we deal with them that makes a difference. And it's it's a matter of focus and priority. You know, the boxing match, the match. It's a whether that boxer is, is focused on why he's there. And that's fighting and not the the ring girl. Um, in our our walk, it's uh, uh, all about whether we've got our eyes fixed on Jesus. Uh, in Hebrews twelve two. Let's fix our eyes on, on Jesus, uh, the uh, author, uh, perfecter of our faith. Because um, it's, 
it requires a lot of training on our part. It does to, to keep that focus because the, the distractions are going to be there, and we constantly have to offset that with with focus and priority. Right, right. You you you're right, Brother Keith. And uh, we have to. I think that's why if you turn over to First Corinthians eleven and twenty eight, I know Christ was he was you know was doing the the Last Supper or whatever. Uh, I won't say whatever, but he was having the last supper before he actually got persecuted. And one of the things he said over in 11, 1 Corinthians 11, 28, he said, let a, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eat it and drink it unworthily, eat it and drink it damnation to himself, not discerning to the Lord's body. Now, if he said it then, when he was telling the disciples to them examine themselves, before they, that's why when we're taking the Lord's supper, it's always, it's all, you should always examine yourself, not only why you're taking this Lord's Supper and who it's represented and, and what, what's the manifestation behind it, but examine yourself. Are you worthy enough to take this? Are you, are you, you know, caught up in the just you? You know, you're not, you got to think about other people that may be sitting there as well. They don't know anything about the Lord's Supper. So, you know, here he is Christ and gave himself for us. Here he is, he's a sparring partner, he's a coach of ours, he's a friend of ours. He had already been through that match. So if you don't even examine yourself to even realize that, whoa, it's something I need to change, something I need to work on. Something that whereas I can't be distracted, even in the Lord's Supper over there, they was talking about examining himself. Not only just then, we need to do it every day, examine ourselves. Because of the fact is, like you said, the distractions, they're going to come. They're going to be there. They're going to be there right when we leave up out of here. They can be right here right now as I'm speaking, um, how somebody came in and asked for chairs. So they're always going to be there. It's just that, like you said, we have to recognize we don't know that it's coming, but it's coming. That's just like people don't know when death is coming. We don't know are we going to be here tomorrow. We don't know if we're going to be here today. Um, excuse me for saying this. Even uh, the lanes, you know, when they lost... Their son, I'm pretty. They didn't know that you know Brian wasn't wasn't gonna be here the next day. I think if we all knew, we'll prepare ourselves better. And that's the scary part about it because we don't know. And the Bible talks about you know coming as a thief in the night. A thief comes when you unexpectedly. You know he ain't gonna come there when you because if he did, he wouldn't be a thief. He gonna sit there and well, I know he's coming today to break in and take some, so I'm gonna be prepared for him. So he's not like, he's a thief, but he's going to come there when you unexpectedly, you know. So we have to be aware of those distractions that's coming and um, do what we can do. Stay in God's word, keep fighting, keep doing what we can do. Any other questions or comments? Any distractions other questions? are always going to come. Sometimes we're yes, hearing from God. He talks weird things in our life every day. It's how we um, handle them. And everything we do, we do it for the little Lord. Even if you're on Facebook, I use it to lift people up. It's a, it's a powerful tool for right. building relationships. Right. I skip over stuff that brings me down or is just junk, whatever. But I find out about friends that are having problems. I build them up. That's celebrate right. with people. That's right. You know, I, I feel like a lot of times, um, oh well, we didn't have distractions back then, but we do now because there's Facebook. Right? Well, anything can be a distraction. That's right. It's your attitude towards it, how you're using it, and what your focus. It could be anything. Somebody, right, you, know, right. you know, someone came in to get the chairs and distracted you. Well, say how are you doing? And I did. Good opportunity I to did. turn it into a good, that's a right. good distraction. That's right. You know. And that, and that's and I thank you for that. Well said. Well said. Because one thing about it, we still have to realize that our God is a jealous God. He don't He don't want you to put anything before Him. Not anything. Um, that's God. You know, we gonna have to give Him all praise and all glory. And when we put these things before him, these distractions before him, he will allow something to happen in our lives to maybe take us down to our lowest point so he can elevate us and show us that he is at his best even when you're at your worst. Are there any other questions or comments? All right, let's go ahead and pray and dismiss the class. Oh, Lord, we just thank you so much for this morning, Lord. Just thank you for everything that was said in this class, Lord, and all of the comments. And, Lord, we just pray, Lord, that we just continue to edify, continue to uplift each other, continue, Lord, to pray for each other, Lord, even though we know that there are distractions that are there, Lord, but we know that you're God, 
and that you deserve all praise and all glory, and you're there even in our distractions. So, Lord, we ask you, Lord, that, that we become closer to you, our relationship become closer to you, and closer to each other to help each other, to know that you're there and you're there for us. Thank you once again, Lord, for this class this morning, and pray for us individually and collectively. And we pray throughout this day, Lord, and throughout the rest of this week, if it's your will, that we be able to do something in your name. In Christ's name we pray and we say, amen. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Next week, water breaks. Round eight.